Hey y'all, uh, Jason here from geoffadesigns.com and in this video I'm going to be covering a little timing trick I use when programming my bump buttons. To illustrate this, I've built a little bump button here that will fire uh, a different truss of fixtures every time it reaches a hit cue. It'll put them to 100% and then the release cue will just restore them to no value for another executed takeover. Now the problem with the way I've set this up is that I am required to wait this 0.7 seconds before I can fire the next hit cue, which means that if I need to fire it again before that timing has finished, I'm going to end up firing the release early rather than firing the next hit early. To navigate this, instead of using a follow time, what I use is uh, the time function uh, for the trigger. So the difference between the two, for those who don't know, is that follow will wait until the end of the previous cue's timing. So in this case, it will be waiting for the end of this 0.7 second fade. If I had any delay timing in there, if I had any uh, individual fixture fade and delay timing, it will wait until all of that has been executed before it will fire this next cue automatically. Time, however, will reference the beginning of the previous cue's execution, which means as soon as you hit go, for this cue, this timer starts counting down, which I can demonstrate right here. You'll notice that as soon as I hit go here, that timer started, regardless of this fade time. If I change this fade time to five, you'll still see that countdown in one second, even though this fade is still ongoing. So the way we can use that to our advantage, now if I was to just set these all to 0.7 on time, that wouldn't help us at all because that would be the equivalent of doing a follow in this case. It's going to wait that 0.7 seconds either way before it fires this information. So what we're going to do, once we change these all the time, we're going to set the trig time on all of these to zero, which isn't going to give us the most desirable result because um, it's going to immediately be firing the uh, fade out if we just leave it like that on its own. However, what we can add to that is Q delay of 0.7, and now, even though the Q itself has immediately fired, it has delay information in it to wait 0.7 seconds before executing the release on all those all the <laughs> on all of those fixtures. What that translates to is that it will get that full fade in before it triggers the release. However, our Q marker is immediately lined up to fire the next hit. So no matter what stage I'm at in the previous hit, I'm always going to fire the next hit rather than ever accidentally firing a release. So to recap, uh, the process is instead of using follow times, using time with a trigger time of zero and applying your timing to the delay rather than the trigger time. Um, so that's it for this. Uh, for more plugin and tutorial videos, you can subscribe here on YouTube, as well as following me on Facebook and or subscribing to the newsletter on my website. Uh, in that description, that link is in the description below. Uh, you can also f reach out to me on my website or on Facebook with any comments or suggestions regarding this or future tutorials or plugins. So that's it for this video, and I will catch you all next time.